Across the country, there is a growing darkness, a belief that the end of days is near. It's the end of the world as we know it, and I feel like reacting to Doomsday Preppers because I didn't get to finish reacting to this last week. Yes, last week I reacted to the first half of this clip. Here's a clip of it here. This is a bug out bag. Yeah, we got that. Thank you. Part of Raimi's work entails reviewing the glut of supplies on the multi-billion dollar prepping market. From his home in Colorado, he publishes a roundup of threats and how to prep for them. You mean he posts threats about what could end the world, not like he's going around threatening people, right? So I hope that all of you fabulous, beautiful people are ready to watch me react to the other half today! So without further ado, I'm gonna roll that intro, and then we're gonna get right into hearing about the end of the world and why we should prepare for it for no reason at all. Fucking dramatic. This is Doomsday Preppers. This is Doomsday Preppers! Yeah, let's go! In the past, the reality TV shows that would cover preppers, they'd find someone who had the most extreme fantastical concern. Oh yeah, you don't say, and uh, this one doesn't do that then? Like, fascist alien zombies arriving on an asteroid. That is so night and day from where we're at now. From where we're at now, like, that's where I started on this conspiracy trip, but now I'm way beyond that. And now we just believe that Bill Gates is trying to kill us with 5G and shit. In the foothills of Tennessee's Smoky Mountains, we met Heidi Keller in her vegetable garden. A restaurant supply company worker by day, she lives alone and calls herself a homestead prepper. I guess they have different levels of preppers, like some kind of MLM pyramid scheme ready to hunker down or bug in in a crisis. You can put raw meat in here. She recently acquired the hottest item for preppers, a freeze dryer. That's a pound of ground beef. This is where I keep all oh, of my wow. canned goods. Inside her pantry, Keller has canned, freeze dried, and stored enough food to get by for a year without leaving her property. Only one year? Like, here's the thing that I never understand with these doomsday preppers and whatnot, right? Is that they always get this bunker and they fill it with food, but then it seems like not one of them prepares for any longer than like a few years. So it's like, why would you want to live through the end of the world and then be in your bunker and then only survive for a year or two? Like, bitch, you better be putting it up canned food in there to last me 25 years or else I ain't going. Chicken, meat, roast beef, and it doubles as protection from surging food prices. After fire spread through nearby Gatlinburg during a 2016 drought, Keller says she wanted a backup. When the fires came, it made me rethink, oh my gosh, I can't have everything in my house because if something does happen and there is a fire and my house burns, it can't be all in one location. Oh, well, I am glad that she's okay after the fire and everything, and I get how she would maybe want to protect herself from that, but going straight into being a doomsday prepper is a little bit much. So the long-term ter storage things, I have someplace else. Where is that? In a secure location. <laughs> Ha ha, he almost got you there, didn't he? It's not here. <laughs> Fort Knox. No. How far from here? He's here says everything. I'm waiting for her to be like, I said, I said it's in your location! Not far. Within five miles. Oh, well, there you go. You give us more hints? Why would I do that? You know, I'm not. I said it's in your location! As a rule, preppers don't like to reveal too much. You might say they also have trust issues with the country's infrastructure and the ability of its institutions to deliver in a crisis. Oh, I thought people were doomsday preppers because they completely trusted the government and how they handled these things. If there's some kind of catastrophe, to what extent do you trust the government? I'm not going to down the government. I mean, they do the best that they can, but pretty much the government's not going to take care of you, not because they may not want to, but because there's too much going on. Oh, well, she does seem sweet. That's common sense. You're prepared to go it alone. You have to be to some degree. My biggest concern for two years, it took me to get a wood stove. I didn't have that, and I'm all electric, so I was not prepared. And finally when I got it, it was like, phew, 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 phew. 
Finally, I'm, I feel more comfortable now. I'm okay. Well, for a year anyway. Keller has canned, freeze-dried, and stored enough food to get by for a year. So, you know, keep collecting those canned goods, sis. If all it takes is a wood stove for Heidi Keller to feel comfortable, when the sun rises on post-apocalyptic America, the money class will find comfort here. Again, that was a little depressing, but I guess we're moving on now to another doomsday prepper. We drove to the belly of the country, central Kansas, flat as a countertop, hemmed by soybean and cornfields. Why does he hate Kansas so much? Who'd you actually buy this from? Where we met Larry Hall. Larry the Doomsday Prepper, got it. A former defense contractor turned, shall we say, niche property developer. In 2008, he paid $300,000 for this decommissioned nuclear missile silo. I'm sorry, what? In 2008, he paid $300,000 for this decommissioned nuclear missile silo. Well, that was a way to waste money. Anyway, continue on. He and investors put in $22 million to refashion it as a luxury bunker. People invest millions of dollars to have one of these made? Oh my god, I am totally in the wrong career. The Survival Condo. <gasps> It has a name. The survival condo. We're not in Kansas anymore. I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. Considerable thickness for door to a residence. Inside the 16,000 pound doors, an apartment building. So this isn't just a bunker for he and his family and a few investors. Oh no, this is a whole apartment bunker underground. We're gonna go down to 14. Except this one is jammed 15 stories into the ground. 15 stories, holy! Jail burning fireplace over There's here. room for 75 people. All but three of the 14 private units have been sold. There are that many crazy doomsday preppers in our world today with millions of dollars to spend on an underground bunker apartment. I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. This three bedroom with TV screens posing as windows goes for $2.4 million. Cash. Who are your clients? These are all self-made people. We don't have any lottery winners or um, old money. We have uh, retired doctors, professional people. Do they share a particular ideology? No, they don't. I mean, other than thinking that the world's gonna end for some crazy reason, I guess not. I know that there's independents and I know there's Democrats and Republicans. They got the whole mix here. But what they have in common is they all wanna have a safe place for their family. Yeah, that's what this is all about, a safe place for families. Sure. We've got a 75 foot long saltwater pool. The end of the world as we know it, they'll feel fine sitting poolside. Damn it, he stole my joke! Oh, wow. rock Unless they'd prefer to go rock climbing. No one was living here full time when we visited, but Hall says the place was hopping at the onset of the pandemic. Aha! Proof that the pandemic must be over, I guess, or something, because they all came back up on Earth? Guess we have no reason to worry, huh? The owners, for the first time ever, all came here at the same time. All of them. So 19 kids were here. It's the buy Paul's sales pitch reduces to three words. Peace survival. of mind. This is just a common area. Every, and with every, dozens of strangers holed up together in a crisis, here's our bar. He hired a psychologist to consult on design to avoid a subterranean version of Lord of the Flies. <laughs> Well, I mean, I guess that's good. I did notice what looked like a jail cell. Oh my god, why? They've gone rogue and they've created their own authoritarian environment under there. We do have a jail cell. That's because we also have a bar and a lounge. And if you have a bad day or you drink too much, you might get an adult timeout. A what? Adult timeout. Adult timeout. Yeah, I don't know what this adult timeout stuff is because we just call that the drunk tank. Five different power sources keep it all humming. There's a five-year supply of stored food and hydroponics to grow more. Okay, so he stored enough for five years, but then he also came up with a way for them to grow more food so that hopefully they can last longer than that. So I guess he's doing better than the other ones were, which is easy to do when you have investors who are willing to invest millions of dollars to live underground with you. Just saying. The survival condo also employs doormen. That is, armed guards at the gate. To what extent are you worried this place could be overrun during an actual crisis. This place was engineered to withstand a 20 kiloton uh, nuclear warhead detonated within a half mile. Whoa, okay, so this dude means business. A and I actually mean he means business, like he's selling these condos, yo. You know, you can rant and rave and throw smoke bombs and Molotov cocktails and you're gonna 
scratch my paint. I love how all of them think that they're the ones who are going to be attacked. Like when the end of the world happens, if they go down to their bunkers, people are going to come just to try to get them. Like, who are you? Paul is converting another silo half an hour away. Of course he is. Most bunkers worldwide are not fortified luxuries. We get a vivid demonstration of their practicality as Ukrainians take cover. In Australia, this man made news when he emerged unscathed from his backyard bunker after a deadly bushfire. Yeah, now see, that is kick-ass right there. That dude's like Superman and shit. Here in the U.S., one personal bunker manufacturer told us he takes a new order every other day. What do you make of the spike in bunker sales? The vast majority of people should never get to the point of having a bunker. Oh, look at that. The dude from the first one's back. And he's like, I know I'm in the bunker industry, but none of you should need one. That is until the end of the world comes. And in fact, I really dislike the bunker narratives because it takes away from the conversation that we should be having, which is how do we make our existing homes and our existing communities more resilient? That was the most intelligent thing said in this whole thing. I think we also need to discuss why people have no faith in the government if this thing ever does happen that they would be able to help all of us. We have a lot of issues we need to solve. I don't think building bunkers is going to help any of us. Rather than, and I'm going to quit society and go live in a decommissioned missile silo. You say you would never build a bunker. Why not? You can only stockpile so much in your bunker. I can only withstand so much time in it. I would be desperate to peek out <laughs> and see what's happening outside. Yeah, that guy's dead when Judgment Day happens because Ash Mufara causes it, I promise. Bradley Garrett won't bunker down, but he has doubled down on bugging out. He keeps a second truck, this 1972 GMC, in his yard in case the lights go out for good. Oh, uh, okay, I'm listening. What is that supposed to do? Hey kids, let's just head out to the Chevy and I'm gonna save us from the end of the world! taking out electronics and turning his hybrid escape vehicle into the equivalent of an expensive brick. The specter of massive power grid failure, the result of a nuclear attack or solar storm, preoccupies many preppers. Yeah, me too, fam. I'm scared too. I'm scared that the U.S. is gonna get Russia to blow us all the fuck up, okay? That, that's what I'm scared about. Maybe I should be building a bunker. The current estimates from the government is that it would take two years to rebuild the grid. Two years? The so Wi-Fi well, goes down for five minutes and everybody panics. Exactly. And, and preppers say that it's 72 hours to animal. Wait, what the fuck? 72 hours to animal. Like the Adam Levine song, 72 hours to animal. What does that mean? You know, meaning, meaning what? Meaning that it takes about three days for people to totally lose it. Uh, uh, oh, uh, okay. Good to know. Preppers call this the SHTF scenario, the proverbial S hitting the fan, a breakdown of social norms. John Ramey says, don't panic, just get prepping. Well, of course he says that. He's in the goddamn doomsday preppers business. Cheesh. If you have two weeks worth of food and water in your home, a radio, some basic supplies, that alone, that little bit of effort and cost, covers you. I feel like most people have emergency supplies set aside. Like I know we have candles just in case the power goes out and that kind of thing. I feel like there's a difference between doing that and then being a doomsday prepper. And I'm not sure if this guy understands the difference. But anyway, once again, I do feel like this conspiracy mainly exists so that people can make money off of it. And this guy is one of them. So that's about all I can take for this episode. But stay tuned and make sure that you hit that subscribe button because I plan on doing many more in future. Please do give this video a like if you liked it. Maybe you hated it. Maybe you are a doomsday prepper. In that case, go tell me I'm wrong down in the comments below. And no matter where you are or what you're doing, I hope that you're all having a fabulous day. Take care, and I will see you all very, very soon. Mwah! Bye! And remember, the world's not going to end, okay? I promise. At least, I don't think so. Across the country, there is a growing darkness, a belief that the end of days is near. I'm repeating we're not in Kansas anymore. Uniform and book, burning blood, letting every motive escalate. Automotive, center, rain, light a candle, light a motor, step down, step down, watching heel crush, crush up.